In this edition of CEO at Work, we will be capturing the story of an individual from unknown to one of the finest banker in India. It's a story of grit. It's a story of self-belief. It's a story where if you put India in center, the real success can be weaved. We are at IDFC Bank's new head office, and today we are here to meet V. Vedanathan, Managing Director and CEO, and understand his the secret sauce which keeps him going. Hello there. Hey there. How are you, Nikunj? So nice to meet you. Such Congratulations you. on your new office. Thank you very much. They say life is a full circle, but in your case, uh, indeed it's a full circle. When you left this office, you were executive director of Citibank. Now you've come back as managing director and CEO of IDFC Bank. So you left as an employee, now you've come back as a promoter. <laughs> it's a great feeling, right? It's a great feeling. I can't say promoter, but I can just say that uh, it's a, like life has come, come a complete circle. I can't really believe it, actually. Did you actually plan the circle would be so quickly and no, within uh, no, less than 10 at, years? Not at all, actually. You know what? Uh, in hindsight, I feel it is a bit of a foolish 40s decision, <laughs> <laughs> if you call it so. Because, you know, when I left ICICI, I used to think that I thought that, oh my God, I'll acquire an NBFC, I'll convert it to a bank. Having gone through it for over 10, 12 years now, I just realized how long the odds were. I really, you know, very long odds, you know, they build a business, find a private equity, you know, convert it to a bank. I don't know what happened. So, you kept on working towards taking IDFC or Capital First to be an NBFC and the bank happened? It was All by design? Was, no, no, it was fully by design. From day one of Capital First, in fact, I had a lot of businesses in it. We had real estate, we had broking, mm -hmm. we had wealth management, we had real estate. Mm -hmm. I shut everything down, mm -hmm. everything, because I knew one day if I apply for a bank license, mm -hmm. these things will come in the way. Mm -hmm. It was planned that way. But now when I look back, I feel the odds were very low. Mm -hmm. You know, just because it happened to come out well, mm -hmm. I can't say it's a formula. Mm -hmm. When you acquired the bank... Capital First. Or capital First, when Capital First acquired the bank... Uh, the terrain was different, the economic landscape was very different, and it was merger of two large corporate balance sheets. There was a lot of asset and no liability. And then came the slowdown, which impacted just about every major corporate balance sheet. So you decided to move forward, but then the minute you decided to move forward, the down cycle started. Then COVID hit. Then COVID hit. So it must not be easy. No, it was really. First of all, we didn't acquire the bank. I, let me say it's a merger. Mm. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it is like crazy. You, uh, we went through, we put the merger. To, first of all, it was a full one year process to get the merger through. Mm -hmm. You know, NCL, TRB, all that. Uh, but frankly, when it all came through, um, I think within about a year, COVID hit. And of course, the infrastructure cycle didn't play out. So I think, uh, but actually happy. I don't want to look so much in the back. I just want to see that. Two years have gone, three years have gone by. Uh, I'd still certainly say most things are settled now. How did you deal with uh, the initial hiccups? Because there were a lot of hiccups which initially came through, largely because of the curve of the economy we were in. DHFL, Reliance Capital. Uh, these were... The port. These were the challenges. All that. But I'll tell you one thing we did, which really played well. Uh, and I'm very happy about the way we played it. First of all, let me say it was tense mm -hmm. to answer your question straight. In board meetings, quarter on quarter, phase one boulder, it was. Uh, but what worked was we were straight, very straight. When we came to your channel, so any other channel, we said the numbers straight. We did not find some cute interpretations. We said the numbers straight, we took the provisions straight. And then uh, we told people a plan every time. Some of the, some of the markets believed us, people believed us, customers believed us. I think for some reason, we, our bank enjoys really fantastic goodwill. I really think so. So since you reported six quarters of losses, was there any point in time you would say, oh, <laughs> guy. I mean, see, I, I, I shouldn't say like that. You know, it would be very unfair of me to say that because uh, this bank has a... Uh, a, a a good brand, uh, people respect this institution, and it has a banking license. So uh, I never looked back and said, oh my God, what have we done? Mm -hmm. But yes, uh, uh, some of the hits were hard. 
I can't deny. Like Vodafone, 3,200 crores. Finally, it gave us no loss, but just the period is so tense. What I admire about IDFC Bank, the IDFC First Bank, the franchise, is the brand value. And the fact that your CASA now is almost 50%, north of 50%. And some of the strong banks have that kind of a strong CASA. So your no, liability no, we, franchise is made up. Very strong. We're very, very happy about that. You know, 10% to 50% CASA in three and a half years flat, I dare say very few banks are put in the country. The reason I definitely feel, see, one thing is there, a bank may have posted losses, but I'm telling you again, people trust our bank. They trust us. They think of us like a good quality institution. You know, our products will come to later, are very honest and very straightforward and good quality. So somewhere along the way, our biggest thing was how deposits came to us. It's a revelation. It's a big satisfaction. Now that the liability franchise has been built, let's talk about the lending part. Uh, I was reading in your note to the shareholders that you've learned the art of saying no. The number of loan as a bank you're saying no to is far higher in number of loan sanctions which you're giving. So walk us through the culture here. Unfortunately, you know, this is true in this country. Uh, you know, the, the demand in this country is so crazy high. Uh, we are having to reject 40 or having to, not it doesn't give us great joy, but having to reject 40 to 60 percent of the applications. So, you know, we have a 10-step process to giving a loan. Mm -hmm. The 10-step process first involves bureau check, some customers fall off. Then we do some go-no-go -no -go checks of scorecards, some customers fall off. Mm -hmm. Then we do cash flow checks, some customers fall off. Then we do ratio checks, you know, debt equity and all that, some customers fall off. Then we do some Google check and all that, some customers fall off. Then uh, we do to title, title deed check about security, some customers fall off. So damn thing, you know, reject, 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 finally reject, approve only 40, 60%. Mm -hmm. But good thing is, if you do it so carefully, for us, this culture about having low NPA is our fetish. You know, our triple life is our gross NPA should never cross 2%. Our net NP should never cross 1%. We are working to that formula. So that is very important in this country. And do you think that trajectory would be maintained for the next three years at least? I can tell you for 12 years, except COVID, our gross NP never crossed 2%. That's quite a lot. 10 years. It's not like... So 10 years. And then uh, even after COVID, COVID went up, of course. But then now it's come back to 2 and 1. So not for the next 2, 3 years. The way we're running the bank, according to me, we will constantly, hopefully as far as eyes can see, it will be 2 and 1. So, in terms of the approach, what you are doing now, this is a technology stroke AI dominated bank. Some would argue that in India, the way the banking sector is now moving, the big banks are getting bigger and new banks uh, who have a small balance sheet, they may not have the right to win because it's really, the, it, it could be a war of David versus Goliath. No, no, that's not true. See, we should not forget this country is so underserved. It's, it's unbelievable. And actually, there should be a space for newer banks. And they're already space. Let me give you one data. You know, it'll, it'll, it'll surprise you. So look at country GDP. Today, we are like maybe 2.63 trillion. Now, 2030 will be something like 7 trillion. Right? We know that. You know how many gig economy employees are there in the country? It's a new kind of employment, mm -hmm. as you know. Mm -hmm. India has about 7.78 million gig, gig economy employees today. Mm -hmm. You know the number in 2030? Mm -hmm. 24 million. 3x. Yeah, about 2 million probably. Huh? 24 million. 24 million. 24 million, yeah. 24 million mm -hmm. from 8 million today. Mm -hmm. So the point is that that kind of growth is coming. So I don't think, honestly, some three or four or five banks can serve this country at all. It has to be more players. And I think we are in a, we have set a very good platform. Deposits are CASA's 50%. Branches are there. Network is there. Lending machine is there. Our bank can't be stopped. So is there a number where, where you would say that, look, this is the aspirational number. Yes, this I'll, is the number where I eventually want to take the bank to in terms of a balance sheet size. See, this bank will, according to me, growth of 25% per annum mm -hmm. will be a story for a long, long time. But that's because of pace. That's because of pace. Mm -hmm. Now let's pick the number of, say, suppose our loan book today is say, 1 lakh crore. Yeah. Don't forget that once upon a time, even ICICI Bank was a 200 crore balance sheet. Yeah. Today is a 8 lakh crore on the retail side or 7 lakh crore. Mm -hmm. Remember, HDFC Bank was some once upon a time 1,000 crores. Today is 10 lakh crores, mm -hmm. uh, maybe 8 lakh crores on the retail side. The point is that these games never stop. My answer is that uh, if a balance sheet, say, doubles every three and a half years or so, uh, I think we should look at 5 lakh crore, we should look at 10 lakh crore, we should look at 20 lakh crore. This game will never stop. It will definitely go past my lifetime. Hmm. So what are you doing to ensure that 
oil in india is very easy to lend the challenge is of course maintaining that asset quality ensuring that as you grow the asset quality is not compromised and that's where the culture part comes in that's where the entire process comes in it's not only culture there are two things here i told you culture wise we are very conservative and mm -hmm. to to maintain mm -hmm. a net npa 1% you know the culture is inbuilt for 10 years uh, it is actually the tools that have come into the country these days are phenomenal you know there are four credit bureaus mm -hmm. people really care about credit bureau in the country do you care about a credit score of course Everybody, all of us do now everybody cares so that's a very big control the second thing is that the cash flow evaluation technologies have dramatically improved mm -hmm. so you are underwriting much better than what it was even 3 5 years ago uh, number 3 because of upi the collection capabilities have dramatically improved you're not sending call centers and agents anymore you're sending the upi link getting money so for these fundamental constructs i think quality of credit will get better in the country mm. because the guardrails have come so what does this mean for your shareholder as you will grow efficiencies would kick in so i would imagine that roa which is important benchmark to understand that how efficient the bank is uh, that will go closer to 2 and will certainly stay above 1 okay something very important about the bank in case you missed it our roa return on assets at the time of merger was zero yes zero because too large uh, the merger was between two liability two, two, two asset uh, balance so sheet. zero normally to move from 0 to 1% takes a long time takes maybe 5 or 6 years we got there in 3 years we are now 1% roi bank in 3 years so i think the pace at which we fixed the profitability is something to really watch so and let me tell you and to your this story will not stop at one let me leave it at that what gives you the confidence because the underlying economics are like that I, we our our incremental business roa is upward of 2% so we'll be one of the healthier roi in the country the most important uh, way of understanding any business is customer satisfaction what have you done in last 2 years in last 3 years to ensure that your customer satisf satisfaction ratings are high so let me just say that first of all just see the numbers okay if a bank has grown retail deposits by 60000 crores in 3 years that's a big number it's a big number right that for a startup bank mm. so i think there is something phenomenal about our proposition which is getting us that kind of stuff so so that's the number but let me just tell you how we do it we are a new bank the way we think about it is that we have an opportunity from day one of building customer propositions that are phenomenal when is the first time you saw savings account interest rates on a monthly basis nikunj didn't see it for 75 it was years we brought this in the country okay when is the first time you saw credit cards annual fee joining fee free and no minimum spend conditions you never saw it in the country we brought it to the country so everything we whether fast tag or credit cards or savings account or loans our theory is we are a new bank whatever we come to the market no matter what the market is that give something special mm -hmm. so i tell you if you're not a customer of a bank you become one nikunj <laughs> okay you're a shareholder or not i leave that to you depend on comfort but i can tell you customer you should be because the bank is putting together i believe really special products at least you know i i go a lot and meet a lot of employees and people and as you know customers also at all levels i'm finding a buzz in the bank if you are a fly on this wall and you should be <laughs> since you are here i'm telling you this bank has something buzzing from within there is a lot of happiness from within how we think how employees are uh, our culture it's all aligned there is no negativity in this place about politics and all that there's something pleasant about this place. and we are shooting with you at the time when uh, it's navratri festival season it's a new beginning so i'm really excited and you can feel the energy and the vibe Uh, you, you, oh, you, can, you should come and see the employees. You will feel it. Yes, there's, there's something special. About yes, it. really look forward to. So from here, that's what we would capture the mood and the vibes of this wonderful, brand new office of IDFC First Bank. If you look at the history of the Indian banking sector, one is the. whole big picture macro tailwind what we are enjoying but if i look at the history of great banks what really differentiates them is the board is the culture and is the person at the helm what would you say to that this is absolutely true by the way uh, m m uh, let me say in our case we really have a good board mm -hmm. you can see the list it's all star studded high quality people with lot of experience and frankly our board focuses too much on corporate governance too much means too much you know they won't let one fly 
you know, flag go past. Mm. That's really good. And uh, that's that. Uh, Culture-wise, we talked about it. I think we're really uh, good about that. Uh, about the man of the helm, <laughs> I can't comment. Mm. But I can just say that um, uh, I believe that the foundation of this bank is such, foundation of the bank is such, that this bank is built on very strong fundamentals. Good liabilities, good brand, good stuff, good corporate guns, all that. So I can look forward to this bank being a really successful bank in the long run. And let me say the pride of the nation, at least it's my wish like that. Deepak Parikh uh, once famously said that his biggest regret in life is that his holding in HDFC group of companies is less than 1%. You know, this happens to <laughs> all first generation people. Exactly. At Capital First, at some stage I had about 15% of that company, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with merger and you grow and scale and raise equity and probably not 2%, mm -hmm. but that's okay. But as you will grow, you'll have to perhaps dilute more. You dilute more, but you know, the, the joy is actually in the, in the journey of building the institution. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's where my mind is. We had a very engaging conversation at uh, last India Economic Forum, and we had Mr. Kamath, and there was a real heart-to-heart -heart, uh, exchange <laughs> when you shared about your experience of when you took his blessings when you wanted to start your own venture. That's part one of the story. Let's understand the part two of the story because what you told us for the part one of the story when you decided to start the NBFC, what was his reaction when you actually got the bank license? Well, you know, it's a very funny story. The first time when I got success by a good backing by private equity, actually 2010-12, India was very, very bad situation. This is the economy and all that. So uh, at that time, he woke up, got up from the seat. He was so happy. Because he, actually, he was very tense for me. He mm. felt I was doing something very risky and all that. So he got up from the seat. I remember it. He just got up from the seat to something like this. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, he was, he was sitting on a chair. Mm -hmm. And I was here. Mm -hmm. And uh, this discussion was going on. I told him. This is after you got the bank license? After I got capital first equity from Warburg Pinkers. Okay. So I told him. Mm -hmm. I got it. Mm -hmm. So he, I was here. He got up. Mm -hmm. He removed his tie like this. Wow. Okay? Like uh -huh. a filmy style. Mm -hmm. Gave it to me and gave me a hug. Mm -hmm. But that was part one. Mm -hmm. Part two is that... Uh, you know, five years later, mm -hmm. this merger happened, and I went to, to tell him that this happened, and we're going to merge and go, go with IDFC, we're going to get a mm -hmm. bank license. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a tie on him, <laughs> but you know what he did? Yeah. I went home, mm -hmm. and by the time I reached home, mm -hmm. there was a red tie in a sealed envelope waiting for me. Wow. wow. Such a touching thing. Yes, yes. In fact, uh, every time we have an on the record, off the record uh, conversation on the kind of franchise you are building, Mr. Kamath always. Uh, has some of the nice things, nicest things to say. So that's a great endorsement coming no. from Mr. No, Kamath himself to me, about Mr. the franchise. Mr. Kamath saying that means a lot. Mm. I, th I thank him. But actually, the another g amazing gentleman I've met in my life is Mr. Vagul. Mm. Such, uh, you know, such distilled wisdom I have rarely seen in people. So these are extraordinary people to even get to meet in our lifetimes. Mm. I'd say it's a privilege. In the Indian banking sector, there is one success story of HDFC Bank, but there's another story of Bajaj Finance. Do you think NBFCs, which are data dominated like Bajaj Finance, can they coexist along with the uh, likes of HDFC Bank, IDFC First Bank, or SBI? Yes, you know, it's uh, interesting you're asking that question. I believe that our bank is, uh, is, is more uniquely positioned than, than many here. Uh, you can be one of the amazing great banks like ICIC, HDFC, Access. They all, you know, they all have deposit rates of 3, 3.5. They lend at maybe 8, 9. And that's one model running for 20 years. Uh, we have a set of customer products and services we have specialized in for 10 years, which is different than these banks. Our lending rate slightly, our borrowing rate slightly higher because we pay more deposit rates. So we are a, since you said Bajaj Finance, in a way we have the business model of a Bajaj Finance, you know, Close analytics to and data-driven. Analytics, data-driven, and with a bank license. Mm -hmm. So your growth is assured for eternity. Mm -hmm. So I think we are in that kind of sweet spot, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a good combination to be in. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> if one looks at, Mr. Bernathan, the entire banking landscape, there are three large sources of income for Indian banks. One is transactional, <laughs> demand draft, money transfer. That is history now. Second is fee-based income, which some would say is getting challenged because of fintech and disruption. Companies like Zerodha, they're trying to really change the way how the fee-based model is working. And the third one is classic lending, whether it is term loan or whether it is working capital. How, we, how do you see the earnings for the banking sector per se moving? Because that one big wheel is now 
no longer uh, moving? That's a great question, actually. Uh, in my op opinion, when I see our bank evolve uh, for the last uh, three years, we have the real opportunity of being a bank, a fintech with a banking license. Think about it. A fintech with a banking license, it makes for phenomenal economics mm. and actually makes for, for longevity. So uh, we can be there. It's just a great line, fintech with a banking license. Fintech with a banking license. Fintechs and have technology, but they do don't not have, have a liability license. franchise. They don't have a liability franchise. And our bank has that positioning to take. And by the way, Indian banks are also evolving. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if you see the way we have built, uh, built our uh, technology propositions, our app, our, uh, you know, all that. So we are not just giving a slightly better interest rate for customers. You know, we talked of CASA. It's, of course, a better rate, but also great service, also very, very ethical products, and good technology, you know, the, the whole thing. So the 25% growth, which we just spoke about, and something which you also alluded to in the past, will that be a combination of... Uh, fee-based income as well as growth in terms of term see the, as well as... See, so the way we think about uh, fee, if you notice, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, our set of products, mm -hmm. okay, in every product, in every category, our fees are very low. In fact, one of the employees here when designing a product, you know, we said, is pa charge ni karenge, check book pa charge ni karenge, mm -hmm. uh, you know, IMPS ni charge karenge. They say everything free, 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 free. Somebody who actually here told me, you are running a gurdwara here. Mm -hmm. Because free, you are running a gurdwara here. So, it's not about running a good one. Just that the way we made our products, everything is less fees. I remember a term which you used last time when we interacted on ET Now was that we don't want any dirty money <laughs> in the bank. No, no, that's very true actually. You know, it, uh, again, remember we are a foundation stage bank. Mm -hmm. So if we have money which is not clean and entering our bank, I have some ownership in the bank that is coming to my home. Mm -hmm. You, our employees will be getting some incentives out of that. It's going to their homes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, our senior management have ESOP. It will go to their homes. Mm -hmm. So we believe that if dirty money comes to the bank, which is not earned by the bank the clean way, it will go to our pockets. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anybody will sleep with dirty money. What is the day like in your life? What time do you get up? What time do you sleep? I um, get up around 6.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, these days I have I've developed the habit of solving the wordle. Remember the wordle? Yes. It's yes, a puzzle yes, the New York Times. It's just a But you can only do one a day. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> it's so stressful to wait the whole, whole day. Mm. So do that, then I sometimes go for a run or build some muscle, and then I'm, I'm back to work. Who's influenced you the most in life? Uh, I think uh, I'm influenced by uh, Mr. Kamath, uh, significantly in terms of um, the, the working uh, decision-making styles, uh, definitely. If there is a billboard which should have a message written, and which would inspire you? What should be that message on that big billboard? I'd say keep going. Think long. What gives you the courage? When you hit a failure, when things don't go the way which you've planned, and it has happened at least in the first three, four years of this entire, uh, you know, merger, what kept you going? I believe that, you know, if you, if you don't give up and keep on putting an effort after it, one after the other, the doors open because fundamentally roots were good. I knew India is great. I knew NBFC model is great. I could have been built. The building blocks is there. So if you're not getting it right, try, try, try. Someone will back it. And Chandra of uh, TCS told me that he believes in setting audacious targets for himself, personally, professionally, uh, professionally, and also for Tata Group per se. Do you believe in that? See, I don't set audacious targets to be honest. Okay, and. Um, and meetings go on and sometimes, you know, people discuss what are we doing these days, what should we do. I actually don't set like big things and all that. I don't know that. My focus always is saying that are we enabling capabilities? So, for example, it's one thing to tell people that, you know, I want, you know, our CASA has to become 50% for three years. I don't start like that. I actually say, do you have the capability? Do you have the technology? Do you have the systems? Do you have the people? Do you have the skills? So, I'm a very input person. And I believe that if the input is right, output comes. So you don't believe in feedback, you, give, you believe in something what could be called as feed forward? Uh, I, 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 I don't know how to read that. But I can tell you that uh, But I, I focus on capability building. Okay. And, and in terms of internal management style also, I never get upset with anybody. 
Are you approachable, boss? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I am. Actually, I talk not just to employees. I just talk at all levels. I talk to even, you know, the people who play cricket with me. And fortunately, I'm not a very well-known person, you know. So, uh, like, I'm not recognized, etc. I can go to Shivaji Park. I can play with anybody. Nobody even know me. Uh, I, I, sp I speak to, you know, egg vendors. And I understand everybody's economy. Uh, all these things give me a lot of joy. It just makes me normal. So, all that. I've been told that... Uh in the downtime of late, the new hobby which you've acquired is actually songs. Interesting. And since no, it's a new building, let's celebrate its Navratra and Diwali coming No, soon. a new hobby is actually a bike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought a bike these days. So I, I, I drive my, uh, you know, bike on weekends. Okay. And, um, you know, of course. So it's marathon or it's, uh, it's music or is it bike now? It's marathon, it's music, it's bike. It's everything. <laughs> <laughs> so when do you work then? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it is. Okay, so. that's the guitar. And before we wrap, how about something which really calls for some celebration? Okay, wait. Um, <laughs> okay, wait. Let's, look, I may not be great at this, but uh, since you put this together, I might need a... Okay, first of all, uh, you know, this song, Let It Be, uh, only focus on the lyrics, not on my singing, if that's good for you. <laughs> okay. It's a nice song, it's a very soothing song if you think about it, right? When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, whisper words of wisdom, let it be. And when the broken hearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer, let it be. And for though they may be parted, there is still a chance that they will see. There will be an answer, let it be, 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 there will be an answer, let it be. And when the night is cloudy, there is still a light that shines on me, shine on till tomorrow, let it be. I wake up to the sound of music, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be, 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 whisper words of wisdom, let it be, let it be. That was absolutely wonderful and uh, season's greetings. And uh, here's to wonderful beginning. Congratulations on your new office and God bless. And certainly hope to see this lighter side of you along with your <laughs> quarterly numbers maybe. <laughs> along with quarterly numbers, yes, indeed. Uh, but we're very happy to be here. And um, to all the viewers of the program, thank you for being with us and thank you for your goodwill. Uh, we've had some difficult times, but you are with us. And uh, we thank all our uh, customers and shareholders. Thank you very much. Thank you.